Good morning and a very warm welcome to Peterhead Congregational Church. We bid you welcome to our service this morning and trust that the Lord will, will bless you as we, we meet together to worship him. At the end of our service, we'll celebrate the Lord's Supper. And if you love the Lord, then this table, this meal is most certainly for you that by faith through grace, we might meet with the Lord Jesus Christ. Can I remind you that on Wednesday evening at 7 o'clock on the YouTube channel, we'll have the second of our midweek Bible studies. And next Sunday morning, which is Remembrance Sunday, we'll begin our service 15 minutes earlier at 10.45, so that during our worship, we can keep the national two minutes silence. The psalmist writes, How can I repay the Lord for all his goodness to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Let's worship God together and sing to his praise and his glory. Our opening hymn, which is all the way my Savior leads me and the words will be on your screen. Let's pray together. Let's all pray. God our Father, as we gather into this place, as we gather into your presence, we thank you for the the hope 
and the promise of your mighty word. We thank you for your presence within us, working to to guard us and guide us and keep us. We thank you for the way that you hold us up and lift us up and carry us through the many, many situations of our lives. We thank you that you chose us to belong to you, that you've touched our lives and made us your very own. Gracious God, as we come to worship you today, so we earnestly pray that every part of our worship would be dedicated, would lift up your name, would be covered by you, so that indeed in spirit and in truth we might truly worship you. We thank you that your word promises us that you're present with us where two or three are gathered together, that you're in the midst of us and we hold fast to that great truth and promise. Now as we come to worship you, then we realize that our own lives have fallen short of your glory. We realize, Lord, that in so many different ways we are are tempted that we fall away from you. So our prayer would be this morning that you would take hold of us and guard and guide and keep us and enable us to walk before you, trusting in you, knowing you as our Lord and our Saviour. Gracious God, look graciously upon us this day. Lead us into repentance that we might turn away from our sin and turn afresh to you and to your holy will. Lord God, as we focus our attention on you. So we would also pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ. And we remember those in our number who are unwell today, those who need your presence supporting and upholding them. And we particularly would pray at this time for Charlie and and Rosie Morrison. And we would also be praying for John Slater, who at this time need your presence with them. We remember those who have been struck down with coronavirus and we know that as that virus increases across our land that that changing regulations bring confusion and difficulty to people. But help us. Help us to be patient and help us to seek to live by the rules that are laid before us remembering that our actions can have an impact on other people. Lord, we remember the, the, the stress and the strain on our doctors and nurses working on the front line, working in, in intensive care units at this time, dealing with this infectious illness, and we pray that you would guard and keep each one of them. We remember families who have lost loved ones. And we pray that your presence would would guide and, and lift them through these difficult days. We pray also for for our local funeral director and for funeral directors across the whole of the land that as they have their task to do also, we pray that you would keep them safe. And as services that are are taken and as as people gather help us to remember lord your love and your grace in all of our lives we thank you for the witness of the gospel we thank you lord that that we do not attend to to the word of god in our own strength but in your strength And so we pray that in all that we do and all that we say today and each time we meet, 
might indeed be for your sake and for your glory. Lord, we would ask all of this in and through the precious name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who taught us to pray together as one family and to say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now we would turn to God's word and our scripture reading this morning is taken from the New Testament, from the Gospel, according to Luke. Luke chapter 4, and we'll read from verse 1. Luke chapter 4, reading from verse 1. And the words are on your screen. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the desert, where for forty days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during these days, and at the end of them he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell this stone to become bread. And Jesus answered, It is written, Man does not live on bread alone. The devil led him up to a high place and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And he said to him, I will give you all their authority and splendor, for it has been given to me, and I can give it to anyone I want to. So if you worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. The devil led him to Jerusalem and had him stand at the highest point of the temple. If you're the son of God, he said, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you and they will guard you carefully. They will lift you up on their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. And Jesus answered, it says, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished all his tempting, he left him until an opportune time. Now Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and news about him spread through the whole countryside. He taught in their synagogues, and everyone praised him. He went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and on the Sabbath day he went into the synagogue, as was his custom. And he stood up to read. The scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor, He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners (coughs) and recovery of sight to the blind, to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant and sat down. (coughs) Pardon me. (coughs) The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began by saying to them, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his lips. Isn't this Joseph's son, they asked. Jesus said to them, Surely you will quote this proverb to me, Physician, heal yourself. Do here in your hometown What we have heard that you did in Capernaum, I tell you the truth, he continued. (coughs) No prophet 
is accepted in his hometown. I assure you that there will there were many widows in Israel in Elijah's time when the sky was shut for three and a half years and there was a severe famine throughout the land. Yet Elijah was not sent to any of them, but to a widow in Zarephath in the region of Sidon. And there were many in Israel with leprosy in the time of Elisha the prophet. Yet not one of them was cleansed, only Naaman the Syrian. All the prophets in the synagogue, all the people in the synagogue were furious when they heard this. They got up and drove him out of the town and took him to the brow of a hill on which the town was built in order to throw him down the cliff. But he walked right through the crowd and went on his way. Amen. And may the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word and to his name be all glory and praise. We'll sing together um, our next hymn, How Sweet the Name of Jesus Sounds in a Believer's Ear. <coughs> and the words will be on your screen. Let's pray together. Let's all pray. God our Father, as we turn our thoughts now to your word, so we pray that you would open up your word to us. Open up this word of truth that we might know your will and your purpose in our lives. For we ask it in Jesus' name. 
Amen. Now our scripture passage that we've read this morning from Luke chapter 4, two sections, one the temptation of Jesus, the other about Jesus being rejected at his hometown in Nazareth. Both of these passages are familiar. Both of these sections of the scripture we've read before, we've heard preached on before, but nonetheless, there's always something new, something different, something to remind us that this word is for us today. You see, as we turn our thoughts to this word, it comes after Jesus has has been baptized. So he's just been baptized. And he goes out, it says, Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returns from the Jordan, where he was led by the Spirit in the desert. So God had this time now. We know for 40 days and 40 nights he was going to be tempted. We know this was a time for him to go out into the desert, a time to go out and and be on his own with God. And it's when we're on our own, oft times, It's perhaps when we are feeling most vulnerable or perhaps when we're feeling most joyous and things are going well that there's an opportunity for the devil to try and take a hold of our lives and to bring us back down the way again. Remember, the devil doesn't work um, with any rules whatsoever. He's the rule breaker. That's why he is who he is. That's why he was cast out. And we have to remember that at every moment, he seeks for ways in which to, to tear us down, to stop us in our path and what we're doing. I've said from this pulpit many times, Satan is not interested in a, any church in this land where there is no sense of loyalty to Jesus Christ, where the church is paying lip service to the gospel and does not believe in the fullness of its word, he's already won. But instead, he wants to get in to where the word is upheld, to where the people of God are, are, are holding fast and holding firm and seeking to, to lift the name of Jesus Christ up. And how important it is, therefore, that we remain vigilant, that we remain strong in our faith. In these days of, of the, the difficulty with with coronavirus, as more parts of the United Kingdom fall into different restrictions, and and on Monday as a new system begins in our own um, land here in Scotland that will make different parts of the country under different rules and regulations, And, and it's easy to think, I've had enough of these and I'll put them aside, but as Christians we are called to obey the law. As Christians, we are not apart from that. Instead, we must live our lives according to those who are in authority over us. They have been placed there. Whether we are happy or unhappy with whoever that may be or may not be, that's neither here nor there. We must live our lives in such a way as the example of Christ. What was it Jesus said? Give to Caesar that which is to Caesar's and to God that which is God's. And and surely that's what we seek to do, to live in a a peaceable and law-abiding way, but holding fast to the truth and not willing to give up any part of, of what belongs to Jesus. And what that should remind us, of course, is that we, you and I, belong to Jesus. And therefore, in these days, we, we must be an example wherever we go. We can't afford to be floating rules and so on, because folk will say, look what these Christian folk do. 
And what they should be doing is looking at us and seeing Christ in us. Now it's important when we look at this passage to realize that that the, the devil is at work here. It's not fashionable to speak about the devil. Folk don't like to hear about the devil. You know, let's be honest, as folk make a caricature out of Satan, you know, this wee guy with horns and a pointed tail, and he loves that because it makes him sound like a joke, yet evil, evil, stalks the streets of our land and our world looking to rob people of the hope and the promise of Jesus Christ. Following Satan means coming under his control, being enslaved by him. Jesus says, my yoke is easy. My burden is light. And he has already paid the price for you and I. And it's not about today. It's not about living for today as such. Because the promise of God is that we have an eternity to spend with him in his presence. Now all of that is really important for us as we seek to combat the, the, the attacks of Satan. There were many, many times many times that Satan would would try to bring Christ down. Do you remember what it says in verse 13? Then the devil had finished all his tempting. He left him until an opportune time. Didn't say he left him alone and went away until an opportune time. There would be other times Lots of other times. Think of the scene as Christ enters Jerusalem. Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And just a few days later, all the Hosannas change completely into crucify him, crucify him. How quickly men forget. How fickle man's trust and faith in God is because all of a sudden the one that they were holding up is the one that they now want rid of now for us we can learn how to combat Satan from this passage because we're told that Jesus had been tempted by the devil for 40 days and 40 nights now think of that Not just the three temptations that we hear of here, but tempted for 40 days and 40 nights. Day and night. What does that mean? It means no peace. It means no rest. If you're being tempted every minute during the daylight and during the darkness, then there's no time to sleep. But we'll remember that the psalmist says that the Lord neither slumbers nor sleeps. And all the time that Satan is bombarding Christ, he is being kept safe by the hand of the living God who keeps you and I safe in exactly the same way. The devil says to Jesus, at this time after temptation, when he's been starving, he's had nothing to eat for for 40 days, nothing at all. Jesus, uh, the devil says to him, if, if, do you see? He didn't say, are you the son of God? He said, if you are the son of God, trying to create doubt, but also trying to get to motivate him to do something. The devil's trying to exert power and authority over Christ. If you are, The Son of God, tell this stone to become bread. Now, I guess that if you haven't had anything to eat for 40 days, 
you would probably be glad to eat a stone and you would be hoping that it was some nice bit of bread, nice bit of loaf that you could enjoy. And the devil uses the, 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 the hunger. You see, he knows he's hungry. And so he uses the ordinary things to tempt the Savior. Just as he would use the ordinary things to tempt you and me. Sometimes, friends, we don't know when we're being tempted. Sometimes it might be afterwards that we realize that we've been tempted and then we need to go and seek the Lord's grace and forgiveness. But when we know the greatest way of pushing the devil away is to use the word of God itself, not out of context, but in context. And here, Jesus says, it is written, man does not live on bread alone. Christ's divinity is being challenged here by Satan. And Jesus responds to his, his wiles by saying man doesn't live only on bread. There's another way for my hunger to be fulfilled. Just as in a wee while we'll come to this table and we'll get bread and we'll get wine. And in itself it's only a morsel that we're getting yet by faith through grace we could not sit at a greater banquet for the Lord brings us to the table that by faith and grace we might meet with him. And therefore, there's more to it than just having a, an emptiness in our stomachs filled, but instead our whole being is filled in Jesus Christ. The devil then takes Jesus to a high place and the scripture says, and interesting, interesting words, the scripture says, and it shows him in an instant. Think of that. How could you show someone in an instant all the kingdoms of the world? But Satan, using his wiles, shows Jesus all these kingdoms that are all around, and he says to them, I will give you all their authority and splendor. Think of that. I will give you all the authority of these kingdoms and all the splendor of these kingdoms. How can the authority of any kingdom be greater than the authority of God? How can the splendor of any palace or the, the, you know, some great king dressed in gold and jewels and fine raiment. How can any of that compare with the majesty of the living God? It is of nothing whatsoever. Because everything that's in this world comes to an end. But all that is in the kingdom of God is an eternal thing. And so the devil offers small reward. Look at these kingdoms. I can give you all authority. He doesn't say, I will. He, he says, you know, the devil says to him, um, he shows him in an instant, I, oh, he, 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 sorry, he says, I will give you all their authority and splendor. Not all the authority in the world, just the authority that they have. Do you see there's some kept back for himself because he still sees himself as being in charge of it. I will give you it for it has been given to me and I can give it to anyone I want to. So, if you, Jesus, will worship me, the devil, It'll be all yours. And Jesus says, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Do you see, Satan's using such a huge amount of words 
And Jesus answers in a sentence each time. He answers, answers in a sentence because he knows he's being tempted. He answers in a sentence because he knows that his whole life, his whole being, the Son of God, will not be shaken by the temptations of Satan. The devil leads him to Jerusalem and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. Now think of that. Where is the devil? He has Jesus stand on the highest point of the temple. That reminds us, you see, that Satan will go wherever he wants to go. And, and, and we have to remember that. He can be anywhere you like. It can be in the heart of anybody. Just because we might be sitting inside a church doesn't mean that Satan's not at work inside us. He can be anywhere. But he always has to make himself visible. Because he has to shine forth. He has to try and come forth. And, and you see, he's so proud and haughty and full of himself that he can't resist pushing himself forward instead. What is it that Christ would do? What would be the picture of Jesus Christ but the one who would be on his knees washing the feet of his disciples? The servant king. Not the king making demands of everyone to kowtow and do this, that and the next thing but to come and to serve. And this time, as Jesus stands on this point, he says again, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, and he will command his angels concerning you, and they will bear you up in their arms, lest you strike your foot against a stone. So this time this Satan quotes the word back to Jesus. And Jesus says to him, it says, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Do you see how calmly Christ answers? Do you see how calmly he speaks? He doesn't shout, he doesn't roar. He calmly responds. And in every circumstance, the Satan has not gained one inch into, that, into the life of Jesus Christ. Friends, say there's no room for Satan in our lives. If we have Christ in our hearts, that's where we need to be anchored. If we have Christ living within us, that's where our attention should be. Not in the things that would tear us away. Don't worry about the things that try to tear us away. Remember those words, Get ye behind me, Satan. What a rebuke. What a rebuke. Get away from me. Will he go? Yes, he will go. Will he come back? Of course he'll come back. When we're tired, or we're low, or there's illness in the house, or there's financial difficulty, or we're wondering how we can move on, or there's problems with health, and all the things that might shatter our lives in a way. But remember this at every moment. We are never left alone by our God. He remains with us. At every single moment to hold on to us. And if we do not know what to say, then the very best thing that we can say or do is to, is to close our ears to what's going on out and around us and to speak to the Lord in prayer. Help me, Lord. And He will. He will come to our aid and he will carry us through. At the end of all of that, the devil left till 
an opportune time. As we've said many times before, you know, the, the, if we think then, jump to the end of the gospel, to Calvary's hill, and what, what's the question? What's all the question that comes there? If you are the Son of God, come down from that cross. Was that a question that tempted Jesus? Absolutely not. Instead, he, as our first hymn said, led us all the way because he did not succumb to temptation to come down of the cross. Could he? Of course he could. Would he? No. Because, you see, he was there for a purpose. And that purpose was to save you and me, to save us from this world, to save us from this, the evil one, to save us, to save us from, from a, a, a life of hopelessness and an eternity of darkness. And what was it that he did instead? By going to the cross and shedding his blood and, and calling us and making us his very own, he brings us into his marvelous light where we might live and dwell in eternity with him. If we hold fast to that thought, if we hold fast to the truth of God's word, if we hold fast to to the promise of Christ that we belong to him and that he is a place for us, then we can surely, surely in confidence know that that will of God will be worked out in our lives. Get ye behind me, Satan, for we are children of the living God who by faith in Jesus Christ would claim the inheritance that he has laid aside for each one of us. Shall we pray together? God our Father, we thank you for the hope of your truth of your word. Help us this day to know your truth in our hearts and in our lives. Help us not to be cast down. Help us instead to focus our whole attention on you and you alone, for we would ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus said, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly of heart and you shall find rest unto your souls. Our communion hymn, the words are on your screen. Jesus, my Saviour, to Bethlehem came.
The Apostle Paul writes, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks he broke it and said, This is my body which is for you, do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper he took the cup saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. And a man ought to examine himself before he eats of the bread and drinks of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without recognizing the body of the Lord eats and drinks judgment on himself. Let's pray together. God our Father, as we come now to this, your holy table, we pray that you would draw near to us. We pray that as you've bid us come, that this day we might feast upon the truth of your word. 
We pray that you would take this bread and this wine and bless it as it's laid aside from every common use to this holy use and mystery. And we pray that you would take us, Father, and take us by faith through grace that in this place this day we might indeed meet with you. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. On the night in which he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took bread. And when he'd given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same manner, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Drink from it, all of you, in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, then you do so in the Lord's name. Therefore take this and eat it. For this means the body of Christ, which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of him. This cup stands for the new covenant in the blood of Christ. Drink from it, all of you, in remembrance of him. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Let's pray together. God our Father, we thank you that this day we have met with you and that you have satisfied our every need. Bless us, Lord God. Bless us as we would leave this place Help us to go forth renewed and, and, and prepared for all that this world might bring to us and for every temptation that may come our way. May we hold fast to the Lord Jesus Christ in whose name we ask all of this. Amen. We would conclude our service by singing our, our last hymn. And the words will be on your screen. Take the name of Jesus with you.
now may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and upon your homes, upon all whom you love in this place and elsewhere, this day and for evermore. 